Okay, this is the four voice class and we're going to be dictating a prior CSR from 1990. Uh, looks like we have Mr. Hoffman for the plaintiff and Mr. Fagan for defense or Pretty words, Snowbird, Penny Lane, Superior B, Crystal Harvest, and Rachel Will Wilcox. Rachel Wilcox. <clears throat> we have Deering Precision on here. Deering Precision also. Okay. Okay. It looks okay. like it's there turned around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead and identify. I am Mr. Hoffman for the plaintiff. I am the witness. I am the court. Attorney for defense, Mr. Fagan. And these are uh, two and 15s. Okay. Two. Yeah. Mr. Fagan, for the record, would you state your name for the record, please? Rachel Wilcox. How long have you been a peace police officer? Approximately five years. How long have you been in the narcotics division? About three years. Was that three years as of today or three years as of May 4? Three years as of May 4. Three years, seven months now? that I was in narcotics. Are you still in narcotics? No. What sort of training have you received as a p police officer? As a police officer, I went to the police academy. Is this training in regard to any particular field? Not at this point, just basics. I went to the police academy for six months and got a lot of training. In most all police work out in the field, I got training from other officers, detectives and investigators. Throughout my whole career, I have always gotten new training and things as I went. What type of training have you had regarding narcotics? I have gone to junior and state colleges and had police science and justice courses there. I took courses in narcotics through school. I trained while I was in the police academy too. Plus, I had training in some bureaus of narcotics while I was working for the police department through juvenile and adult narcotics. I have been to seminars and I have read books, pamphlets, training manuals. Did you get any degrees from all the schools you went to? Yes, from college I have an Associate of Arts degree. You have an AA degree from junior college? Yes. Do you have a BA degree? I have not obtained a BA yet. Now, have you had some special courses in narcotic paraphernalia? Objection, vague. Withdraw that question. What type of training have you had on narcotic paraphernalia? Some courses through school and in-service training. How many hours is that kind of course that you just described? Through school, I would have to say roughly 40 hours. Have you ever seen someone free base cocaine? No. Have you seen someone snorting cocaine? Yes. Have you seen anyone smoking marijuana? Yes. Can you list the ways that you have seen them do that? Sometimes they will roll it in a cigarette paper and smoke it or through many different kinds of pipes, some employing water and some not. Have you ever seen anyone sniff marijuana up their nose? Yes. On May 4th, were you dressed in your uniform? No. You were undercover? Yes. Did you look like you do today? Similar. Yes, basically the same. What has changed? My hair was considerably longer at that point in time. Over your ears longer? Yes. How much longer in the back? Objection. Irrelevant. Counsel, could you give some explanation as to where you are going with this line of questioning? I am going to interrogate her about her views and what she saw on the night of May 4th when she went into the store and review her expertise on the items that are located in the back. She is my expert narcotics witness. If you want to show her the exhibits that have been submitted and get her opinion on their function, you certainly can do that. You may use her as an expert for that purpose and that is all. As an expert in narcotics, could you testify about People's Exhibit 1 and explain for us why that is marketed for use with a controlled substance? In my opinion? Yes. It appears to me to be cocaine kit that is commonly used to snort cocaine through the nose. It contains a mirror, which is commonly used to place the cocaine substance on, a razor blade that is used for chopping the cocaine finer if it tends to be chunky or granular. I do object, Your Honor. Overruled. You may proceed. I object to a narrative, Your Honor. Overruled, the witness may continue. Well, this would appear to be some kind of a vial that is used for holding the cocaine and a straw. It appears to be plated with a gold-colored material that is often used to help keep the metal straw from corroding after it comes in frequent contact with the cocaine. When you had worked on undercover cases, have you seen these kits used Many times for snorting cocaine. I have never seen them used for anything other than that. Have you ever been involved in a case where 
heroin was used? Yes. Do people snort heroin? Yes, I believe that some do. Then someone could use that kit for heroin, right? right. Objection, irrelevant. It is argumentative, sustained. Does the word snowbird mean anything to you? I have seen it. I think it is just a brand name. What does snow mean to you? It generally refers to cocaine. Was the kit that we have been discussing designed by the retailer Penny Lane? Objection. Calls for speculation. Do you know who it was designed by? No. Sustained. Did you recognize the name snowbird as a brand name? Yes. Well, do you know where that brand name came from? Objection. Irrelevant. Sustained. Do you have any personal knowledge of the brand name Snowbird other than having seen it in connection with your duties? No. Same rolling. Now, please examine People's Exhibit 2 and give your opinion as to why that item is marketed for use with a controlled substance. What this appears to be is a smoking pipe whereby the smoked substance is put in the bowl on the top, water is added approximately halfway up the bottle, and the smoke is inhaled through the end of the tube. The only occasions where I have ever seen these used are for smoking marijuana. Is there something, any brand name on that water pipe that indicates that it is marketed for use with a controlled substance? No. Does the fact that the bowl is only a half inch across indicate that it is marketed for use with controlled substances? To my knowledge, no. The bowl size does not mean that it is a drug paraphernalia in your, your mind. Objection, misleading. Overall, please go on. Not necessarily. Have you ever heard of snuff? Of course. Could that kit be used for snuff? Objection, irrelevant, insufficient foundation. There does not seem to be a foundation at all. She said she heard of snuff. Objection sustained as to the present foundation. Can I get you to look at... Sir, you are through with exhibit one. I am walking up there. I will be glad to put it back. Let's retain it. We want to maintain the integrity of all these exhibits. Could you tell us why you would think that this item is marketed for use with controlled substances? If this is exhibit three. Do you have any opinion first as to whether that item is used or may have been manufactured or dispensed for the utilization of drugs? Yes, I have seen. What is your opinion? Well, I think it is used as a place to hide contraband narcotics. Do you think you could hide money in there? Objection. That is argumentative. Objection sustained. The only time you ever saw something like that, did it involve drugs? Correct. Does the fact that it has reverse threads indicate to you that it is marketed for use with controlled substances? Not necessarily, no. I am finished with that exhibit. Would you please take a look at People's Four and describe that item? It's a small tan bottle with a small label on the front which says Superior B. It is a vitamin B blend. I have come into contact with such objects and substances as they are often used to alter, cut, dilute cocaine. Can it be used to cut heroin? Sure. Have you ever seen it used to cut heroin? No. Have you ever seen it used to cut amphetamines? Not personally, I have not. <clears throat> have you seen it personally cut? Have you ever seen it strike that? What would be the purpose of adding this to cocaine? To increase the quantity of the cocaine so that retail of the cocaine would be higher. Will the vitamin increase the high of cocaine? Not to my knowledge. Ma'am, I ask you now to look at People's Exhibit 5, Crystallized Glucose. Can you describe that, please? It is a small glass bottle with a white top. It has a label that says glucose, crystal harvest, crystallized. It contains a white powder. Have you ever seen glucose used to cut cocaine? Yes, I have. All right. Does glucose increase the high of cocaine? Not to my knowledge. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. I would like to review more of the contents of the box that is labeled People's Tent. Showing you the first item, Ms. Wilcox, did you indicate on the envelope what exactly was contained in this packet? Yes. Can you please tell us what is in this packet? One cigarette rolling machine, 12 various packages of cigarette rolling paper, and one package of snow seals. What are... Please have this envelope marked People's Exhibit 6. Thank you. Ms. Wilcox, could you explain for us what snow seals are? Snow seals are small pieces of wax covered type of paper, about four inches by four inches. And based on your training, what significance would you attach to them? This type of seal is most commonly used in the packaging of cocaine. Can it be used in other ways? Objection leading. Sustained. Specifically, what was it about the way these snow seals appeared that made you believe they would be used for packaging cocaine? Usually this is the most common type used. 
Were the cigarette papers the same type as described earlier? Yes, they are. Showing you the second bag, did you write the contents on the top of that bag? Yes, I did. What were the contents? It contains three glass or metal straws, three small glass vials, a small funnel. I'm sorry, I did not understand the first item. Start again. Three straws, three glass vials, one funnel, one razor blade, two small spoons, and an inhaler. May this please be marked People's Exhibit 8 for identification. So marked. What do these items mean to you then? These are commonly found in the use of narcotics. As described earlier? Yes. Please remove the inhaler. Would you demonstrate how it would be used? It is a small plastic cap with an opening in one end and a lever located on the side that can either open or close the tiny opening. This top is placed over a small vial and an individual could simply open the top and place the object up to his nose and inhale. Then close the top and return it back to their purse or pocket or whatever they carried the inhaler in. Showing you the third envelope, did you mark its contents on the top of the envelope? Yes, I did. Please tell us what that envelope contains. In it are four bottles of various types of cutting agents used with the preparation of cocaine. Your Honor, may the envelope containing the four cutting agent bottles be marked as people's nine? Yes. Were these cutting agents similar to the ones described earlier? Yes, they are. I am handing you the next envelope. Would you mark its contents on the top? Did you label its contents on the top? Certainly. What does it contain? Six roach clips of various designs. Counts of the envelope containing six roach clips will be marked as people's 12. Showing you one of the items contained in the bag, can you describe this? It is an object in the shape of a gold key. Is there anything significant about this key? It is also a roach clip. When manipulated, the key separates and then locks into place. Showing you a third item, can you explain, is that also a roach clip? Objection leading. Objection sustained. Could you describe exactly how that item works? It is a roach clip in the shape of a guitar. How would it work? Again, it can be released and separated and then clipped back together as with the key. Would you describe the item I am handing to you presently? It is a figure of a skull. The jaw is spring-loaded for opening and closing. What is that item? It again is used as a roach clip in conjunction with the smoking of marijuana. Showing you the next packet, did you indicate its contents on the top? Yes, I did. Please describe the contents of this envelope. Certainly. They are two rather simple looking pipes, each containing a bowl on the end and a long mouthpiece. Based on your training and experience, what would be the purpose of these pipes? These would be used with the smoking of marijuana or hash. Have you ever seen regular smoking tobacco smoked through those pipes? No, never. Showing you another item, did this also come out of box number 10? Yes. Is there a stipulation that this item came out of box number 10, counsel? Definitely. What is this item? A glass pipe containing a plastic stopper on the end with a bowl and attached mouthpieces hanging on a long red plastic cord. May the pipe with the red plastic cord be marked now as People's Exhibit 13, Your Honor? Yes, certainly. Based on your training and experience, what would this pipe be used for? For the smoking of marijuana and hash. Have you ever seen this type of pipe used with regular smoking tobacco? Not one of this size, no. How does this size differ from the sizes you may have seen used for regular tobacco? The size of the pipe itself and the bowl. Ma'am, referring back to the box labeled Deering Precision Instruments, which was earlier marked as People's Two, would you explain what it was about that item that does lead you to conclude that? Objection, vague. Well, no, it is cumulative, sustained. You have had clear testimony about the contents of that box. I see no point in going any further. We won't spend all our time going over the same thing. People have no further questions. Anything further? No. You may step down. All right, this will be some deposition warm up. We have Mr. Barrett for the plaintiff, Mr. Donner for defense one, and Mr. Easy for defense two. Identify. I'm Mr. Barrett for a plaintiff. I am the witness. I am Mr. Donner for defense one. And I am Mr. Easy for defense two. Begins at 15. Yeah, we uh, begin in colloquy with Mr. Donner. And it's Mr. Donner for the record. Can I ask a clarification question? Was that the job that Johnny Sanchez had told you to do? Objection. Asked and answered. To check them. Thank you. Was there anybody else, to your knowledge, at the Sorrento 6000 project that installed these railings? Bob Landau. Bob Landa? Landa, Landau, something like that. Did you ever see Johnny Sanchez install these railings? No. 
Did Bob Landa tell you to install certain railings? Yes. How often would you see Bob Landa install these railings from the time you worked at the Sorrento project in Cyprus? At times he would check them, that's it. And he would tell me, put it back up, that's all. How many times has he seen Bob Landa install or reinstall? Objection, vague and ambiguous. Who was he? I understand I'm working with the interpreter here. I'm sorry. How many times have you seen Bob Landa install these railings at the Sorrento 6000 project? Well, he would check them and sometimes he would put them up. Can you give me an estimate on how many times you've actually seen him put one in? Is it more than five, more than 50? Not many. But some? Yes. Did you install the railings at the Sorrento project when you worked there on a daily basis? Yes. Was this considered your main responsibility? Objection, vague and ambiguous as to when, as to what you mean by the term responsibility. Join also calls for speculation since he was told what to do by others. On the Sorrento 6000 project, were you told by Johnny Sanchez to do any other work besides to install these railings? Besides what he's already testified to about checking out the model homes. Correct. Yes. What were they? As to what? I asked him, or I'm asking you, are there any other things that you did at the Sorrento 6000 project other than install these guardrails or work on the model homes? You said yes, and I'm asking you what those other things were. Check lights and sweep in front of the doors, check the streets, also many things. When he worked, or excuse me, when you worked in the Cypress 6000 project that we're talking about here today, were you paid in cash or paid by check? Check. Whose name was on the check besides yourself? Who did it come from? Okay, I worked for Oakleaf, okay? And Oakleaf loaned me out to work with Cypress Homes. But I worked for Cypress Homes for like about five years, and Oakleaf would pay me. Were you paid by the hour at that time? Yes. Who would report your hours to Oakleaf? Me. Just for clarification on that last, possibly two questions ago, did we get a response regarding whose name was on the check? On your paycheck? Yes, he said Oakleaf. Oakleaf. I heard him say Oakleaf would pay me, but the specific question was, what name was listed on the check? And I did not hear the name Oakleaf inscribed or printed on the check. He didn't say that. If you want to ask him, I don't care. If you could just ask him, is that... The paychecks that you received at the time you were working on the Sorrento 6000, they came from Oakleaf, is that correct? Yes. Was Oakleaf Landscaping's name on those checks? Yes. Were you still receiving benefits from Oakleaf regarding vacation pay? Objection. Assumes facts, not in evidence. Or any other benefits? Objection. Assumes facts, not in evidence. It's also vague and ambiguous as phrased, and I won't allow him to answer. When you worked on the Sorrento 6000 project in Cyprus, were you given any type of training to install these guardrails? Objection asked and answered. Absolutely it was. He told him that Mr. Johnny Sanchez told him how to do it and what to do. Did anyone other than Johnny Sanchez show you or tell you how to install these railings? Just Johnny. Do you know what the purpose for these railings are? No. Were you ever instructed by Mr. Sanchez to remove any of these railings? What do you mean instructed? Instructed. Were you ever told by Mr. Sanchez to remove any of these railings? I would remove them and put them back Back up. Remove them from one location and install them in another location? Yes. Did you ever remove any of these railings without the direct instruction or supervision of Johnny Sanchez? He would have to tell me. That's all I have. Next. Mr. Garcia, you indicated that you were employed by Oakleaf for a certain time prior to being loaned out to Cypress Homes. Is that correct, sir? Yes. What period of time were you an employee of Oakleaf? before you began work for Cyprus on a loan-out basis from Oakleaf? Well, they told me to go help, that's all. Do you know what month and year? I don't remember. Were you considered a full-time employee of Oakleaf when they loaned you out to Cyprus? And let me explain what I mean by full-time employee. Objection. Lack of foundation calls for speculation, vague and ambiguous. Let me rephrase it. Sir, as an employee of Oakleaf, were you entitled to any vacation pay? Well, yes. How many weeks per year paid vacation? One per year. In your employment at Oakleaf, were you given health care benefits? Medical insurance you're talking about? Medical insurance. Do you have any medical insurance through Oakleaf? No. Do you have any medical insurance now, sir? Hold on. That's an invasion of his right of privacy counsel. Unless you can show me some foundation, he doesn't have to answer that. Through Oakleaf? He just told you that Oakleaf never provided him with benefits. You can ask him this line of questions as to whether or not he has any 
now and who they are provided by is an invasion of his right of privacy and I simply will not allow him to answer that. Also, it's not relevant to this case whether he does or doesn't. Counsel, it may not be relevant. My instruction stands. You can ask him another question if you like. Do you recall the month and year that you began work at the Sorrento 6000? I don't remember. Were you working and being loaded out to Cyprus at the time that John Sanchez first came to the project? First, I worked with Manny Corrales. Well, I worked with Manny. I worked like with about five superintendents. Superintendents for Cyprus? Superintendents for Cyprus. That's prior to or before Johnny Sanchez came to the scene? Before. Can you name any others besides Manny Corrales who you worked under at the Sorrento 6000 project? First of all, was Manny Corrales a superintendent? Superintendent. All right, same duties as John Sanchez. Objection, cause for speculation, lack of foundation. Were you given the same instructions by Manny Corrales as John Sanchez? Yes. Were you given the same instructions regarding the installation of railings on the second floor of the premises? Yes. Did you also work with Bob Landa when you worked with Manny Corrales? No. Who came first in the project, John Sanchez or Bob Landa? The one I worked with first? Yes. Who did you work with first, Bob Landa or John Sanchez? No, what's that? What's that? I don't understand. Do you know who you worked with first? Bob Landa, Fieldstone. Did Bob Landa work for Fieldstone, to your knowledge? Yes. What was Bob Landa's position for Fieldstone? Objection, lack of foundation, calls for speculation. Join. Sir, did you ever work for Fieldstone? Yes. What month and year did you work for Fieldstone? I don't remember. Don't remember. What was your job title for Fieldstone? Laborer. Did you work for Fieldstone as a laborer at the Sorrento 6000 project? Yes. Okay, this will be some uh, depot practice at uh, 210 words per minute, so 14. And our attorneys, we have Mr. Thompson for the plaintiff. Mr. Barron for Defense 1, and Mr. Keppelman for Defense 2. Let's identify. I am Mr. Thompson for the plaintiff. I am the witness. I am Mr. Barron for Defense 1. I'm attorney for Defense 2, Mr. Keppelman. And is it Mr. Keppelman questioning? Yes. Okay. For the record, who attended you during the delivery at Monte Vista with Martin? Who was the attending obstetrician? Well, Mr. Dr. Wisman came later. Was it Dr. Wisman who delivered your son? Yes. When were you first informed that there was some kind of a problem with Martin? That is from the time you started labor until you found out that there could be a possible problem or there was a definite problem. When he was still alive? Yes. The first awareness that you initially had, he means before the baby was transferred to Fort Mason. When was your first awareness that there might be a problem? You must have understood at some point there was a problem that required his transfer. What I am asking about now is when you were first informed that there was a problem or might be a problem. Following the delivery. Can you tell me how much after the delivery? Were you still in the delivery room or were you in the postpartum observation room? Or I noticed after the delivery that everyone was rushing around. They would not let me see the baby. I knew something was wrong. I didn't know what at the time. So it was your own perception of what was going on around that it immediately alerted you to the fact that something might not be right? Yes. Were you eventually told that something was not right by someone? Yes, Dr. Wisman told me. Okay, you described his head in the nursery at Monte Vista as cone-shaped. Was his head a different shape when you visited him at Fort Mason when you initially arrived? It had changed, altered shape. It did not appear to be normal. I don't know exactly how to describe it. Did you take any photographs of him at Fort Mason? Yes. Do you still have any of those photographs in your possession? Yes, however, I have them at home. Can you give us any idea of how many photographs you have of him that were taken at Fort Mason? I believe there are five. When were they taken? In relationship to what? I don't understand. Could you repeat it? I will rephrase it. When did you take those five photographs in relationship to when you arrived at Fort Mason for a visit? If you cannot remember the exact date, maybe you can tell us whether it was as soon as you got there, halfway through his hospitalization, or towards the end. It was halfway through. Were these color or black and white photographs? Color. Okay. I would like to ask you, first of all, to hang on to those and turn them over to your attorney. I was just going to say that I assume everybody here wants a copy, correct? Definitely. You go ahead and send me all five of them. If you have the negatives, it might be easier to give the negatives to counsel. Yes, I do. May it be stipulated that my client will send all of her photographs of her child to me, and I will make them available at the next deposition in this case to all counsel. Then if any counsel want any photographs, we will produce copies at their expense. That is okay with me. Thank you, counsel. That's helpful. 
Who were the physicians in charge of Martin's care at Fort Mason? I have no idea. Did you ever know the names of the physicians who were caring for Martin there? Yes, I remember faces now, but no names. Okay. It has been stated that his condition improved and then regressed. Were any of the reasons for his apparent improvement and retrogression given to you? Yes. Can you break it down into who said what, or does that just one general thing come to your mind? The outstanding condition that comes to my mind is the jaundice. What were you told concerning the jaundice? It got really bad. It would get better, and then it would intermittently go up and down. Did anybody explain to you why this, that was happening? Yes, I was feeding him my breast milk. When the jaundice became bad, they would go back on the formula. Then when he was doing better, we would attempt to put him back on my breast milk. It was not working, so we decided to discontinue it. What was the name of the cardiologist who saw Martin immediately before his death? I don't remember. It was some Greek name. Do you have records that indicate his name counsel? I cannot find it. Honest to God, I can't. I looked at the complete records. I could never discover where he had written a note in the Fort Mason records. I am not positive that we'll ever be able to ascertain it. I could not understand his English at all. Could you describe the cardiologist for me? He was dark with black hair and glasses. I think he was about 5'10". Was he Caucasian? I believe that Greek is Caucasian. He had an olive complexion and was in his late 30s or early 40s. Did he have a beard or mustache? I can't recall whether he did or not. Where did he see Martin? The county health department. I did not hear that. I am sorry. She said the county health department. Would you remember the cardiologist's name if you heard it? I don't think so. Were you there during the doctor's examination of Martin that day? Yes, I was. What did he do during that visit? Listened to his heartbeat. That is all I can recall. Did the doctor take any kind of a history from you concerning Martin? Not that I remember. You cannot recall him asking you any questions about the delivery, his stay at Fort Mason, or his development since his discharge from Monta Vista? No. As far as you were concerned, was there any evidence that Martin had any kind of a heart problem? I just knew that he had a slight murmur. All right, we're going to repeat that at 210 words. Mr. Keppelman, for the record. Who attended you during the delivery at Monta Vista with Martin? Who was the attending obstetrician? Well, Dr. Wisman came later. Was it Dr. Wisman who delivered your son? Yes. When were you first informed that there was some kind of a problem with Martin? That is from the time you started labor until you found out that there could be a possible problem or there was a definite problem. When he was still alive? Yes, the first awareness that you initially had. He means before the baby was transferred to Fort Mason. When was your first awareness that there might be a problem? You must have understood at some point there was a problem that required his transfer. What I'm asking about now is when you were first informed that there was a problem or might be a problem. Following the delivery. Can you tell me how much after the delivery? Were you still in the delivery room or were you in the postpartum observation room? Or I noticed after the delivery that everyone was rushing around. They would not let me see the baby. I knew something was wrong. I did not know what at that time. So it was your own perception of what was going on around that immediately alerted you to the fact that something might not be right? Yes. Were you eventually told that something was not right by someone? Yes, Dr. Wisman told me. Okay. You described his head in the nursery at Monta Vista as cone-shaped. Was his head a different shape when you visited him at Fort Mason when you initially arrived? It had changed, altered shape. It did not appear to be normal. I don't know exactly how to describe it. Did you take any photographs of him at Fort Mason? Yes. Do you still have any of those photographs in your possession? Yes, however, I have them at home. Can you give us any idea of how many photographs you have of him that were taken at Fort Mason? <laughs> I believe there are five. When were they taken? In relationship to what? I don't understand. Could you repeat it? I will rephrase it. When did you take those five photographs in relationship to when you arrived at Fort Mason for a visit? If you cannot remember the exact date, maybe you can tell us whether it was as soon as you got there, halfway through his hospitalization, or toward the end. It was halfway through. Were those color or black and white photographs? Color. Okay. I would like to ask you, first of all, to hang on to those and turn them over to your attorney. I was just going to say that. I assume everybody here wants a copy, correct? Definitely. You go ahead and send me all five of them. If you have the negatives, it might be easier to give the negatives to counsel. Yes, I do. May it be stipulated that my client will send all of her photographs of her child to me, and I will make them available at the next deposition, in this case, to all counsel. Then if any counsel want any photographs, we will produce copies at their expense. That is okay with me. Thank you, counsel. That's helpful. Who were the physicians in charge of Martin's care at Fort Mason? I have no idea. Did you ever know the names of the physicians who were caring for Martin there? Yes, I remember faces now, but no names. Okay. It has been stated that his condition improved and then regressed. 
were any of the reasons for his apparent improvement and retrogression given to you? Yes. Can you break it down into who said what or does just one general thing come to your mind? The outstanding condition that comes to my mind is the jaundice. What were you told concerning the jaundice? It got really bad. It would get better and then it would intermittently go up and down. Did anybody explain to you why that was happening? Yes, I was feeding him my breast milk. When the jaundice became bad, they would go back on the formula. Then when he was doing better, we would attempt to put him back on my breast milk. It was not working, so we decided to discontinue it. What was the name of the cardiologist who saw Martin immediately before his death? I don't remember. It was some Greek name. Do you have records that indicate his name, counsel? I cannot find it. Honest to God, I can't. I looked at the complete records. I could never discover where he had written a note in the Fort Mason records. I am not positive that we'll ever be able to ascertain it. I could not understand his English at all. Could you describe the cardiologist for me? He was dark with black hair and glasses. I think he was about 5'10". Was he Caucasian? I believe that Greek is Caucasian. He had an olive complexion and was in his late 30s or early 40s. Did he have a beard or mustache? I can't recall whether he did or not. Where did he see Martin? The county health department. I did not hear that. I am sorry. She said the county health department. Would you remember the cardiologist's name if you heard it? I don't think so. Were you there during the doctor's examination of Martin that day? Yes, I was. What did he do during that visit? Listened to his heartbeat. That is all I can recall. Did the doctor take any kind of a history from you concerning Martin? Not that I remember. You cannot recall him asking you any questions about the delivery, his stay at Fort Mason, or his development since his discharge from Monte Vista? No. As far as you were concerned, was there any evidence that Martin had any kind of a heart problem? I just knew that he had a slight murmur.